1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology, Module 5, Video Clip 5.2. Today we'll look at learning styles and online learning. This clip will provide you with an overview of some of the research on learning styles and how they apply to online learning environments. As you can imagine, there's much controversy and development in the area of learning styles in digital environments, and so research in this area is still in its relative infancy but we're going to take a look at how personality models often feed into learning styles and how these styles are impacted in online learning situations. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Describe some of the models of learning styles and begin to self-assess as to what type of learner you perceive yourself to be. What characteristics of digital learning suit your particular learning style? What do you perceive are some of the pros and cons of online learning? And how can you advocate for your learning by understanding what type of learner you are? Santos states that there really has been no standard definition of a learning style. Over the years, some working agreement has occurred that allows us to have this working definition of learning style, which Doherty and Maddox refer to as a characteristic cognitive, affective, and psychological behavior that serves as a relatively stable indicator of how learners perceive, interact with, and respond to the learning environment. So let's take a look at a few models of these learning styles. Curry's model used as the analogy the layers of an onion, where we have an inner, middle, and outer layer. Curry's inner layer represents your personality, uh, which as you recall from our modules on personality is an underlying relatively stable dimension that controls your learning behavior. The middle layer referred to the cognitive preferences or how you process information, and the outer layer would involve your interaction with the environment. Rasha and Reichman developed a student learning style scale and they talked about six basic learning styles that students exhibit as part of a social learning community. As you read these through, decide where you might fit on this scale in terms of our learning community. You will definitely have the right to pass on sharing this in tutorials, so be honest with your self-rating. The better you are at identifying your own learning style, the more you will get out of this learning experience. So these are their six types the participant who's eager to take in course content and ask questions, the avoidant who does as little work as possible or waits till the last minute, the independent who really likes to work individually and makes few requests for help, the dependent who needs lots of detailed instructions and lots of help, the collaborative person who works well with others and enjoys group work, and finally the competitive type that tries to do better than others in the course. Kolb also had a model called Learning Styles Inventory and used the following parameters that we think either abstract, concrete, active, or reflective. The abstract person prefers to learn through symbolic understanding, whereas the concrete needs an immediate experience. The active person likes external manipulation of tools and hands-on activities in labs, and the reflective person prefers to think about ideas internally. So based on those four parameters, Kolb came up with four different types of learners that are strong in two of the categories. Convergers prefer to make decisions regarding real-world problem solving and practical applications, whereas divergers like to see situations from a variety of points of view, and they are generally imaginative people who are sensitive to feelings. Assimilators prefer to abstract concepts and theoretical models, and they like to put information in a logical format and accommodators are risk takers who like working with others. Thinking back to Young's personality types, I hope you can see some similarities here with these models. And one more model we're going to look at. Note the similarities to the models that we've already examined. Schellens and Vaki suggest that we can measure our learning styles along several bipolar dimensions. Usually we're either auditory or visual, applied versus conceptual, spatial versus non-spatial, social versus individual, and creative versus pragmatic. Take a moment to reflect on the models we've reviewed and think about the areas of strength that you see in both yourself and your classmates. What type of colleague do you find it easiest to work with? What type of learner motivates you when working in a group? And what type of learner demotivates you? In our online learning situation, it's even more important to identify these as you are being asked to do a greater amount of self-study and self-motivation. So knowing the type of learner you are will help you to create a learning situation where you can be successful. 
So whichever model we use, how does this affect us in an online environment? Santos states that online degree providers are increasingly offering self-developed instruments at their websites, which students can complete to determine if their learning style makes it likely that they will be comfortable online. However, these self-assessments rely on students to answer honestly and also have enough self-awareness to answer accurately. But this assumes that every online environment is the same. As each face-to-face -face class is different, digital environments are also different. The teacher can assess students' learning styles to ensure that there are a wide variety of methods to reach different learning styles. And results have been mixed as to whether a certain learning style does better in online learning or not. In fact, it appears that some of the other factors we've studied in this course may have a greater impact, such as your strength or frustration with the technology. A few points to ponder. Finally, it seems that learning preferences do exist, but how much influence they actually have when it comes to learning versus other issues is unanswered. The learner's computer skills and level of motivation may be more influential. Very little quantitative research specific to learning styles and internet-based methods of instruction has been published and the results have been mixed. Zajac states that in the last decades of the 20th century, it was a commonly held belief that introduction of computers into everyday school practice would change not only the way knowledge was delivered, but also the way students absorbed and retained it. The expectation was that students would become more active and more creative participants in the educational process. Those unfulfilled expectations are transferred to e-learning. There is a tendency to claim that personalization is an imminent feature of e-learning. The content placed on the e-learning platform, easily accessible from any place at any time, seems to fulfill individual needs of learners. However, easy access to content does not ensure better results of teaching and learning. And finally, accessibility of learning content only makes the learning conditions more friendly and suitable, but the way of presenting the material and performing the learning activities remains the same for all learners whereas, in fact, everyone has his or her own individual learning preferences. Miriam puts this learning in context and she looks at adult education. She believes that we need to examine three parts of learning to understand how our learning processes evolve. The learner, the context of the learning, and the process. Brainstorm what features of you the learner, the content of the course, and the process of learning online affect your online learning experience. Given what you now know about personality theory, learning theory, motivation, emotions, and cognition, let's take a look at what your perceived pros and cons are of digital learning environments. Remember that these may also include a context where you are training others in your company or taking professional development in your field. Here are a few to start your list. Be prepared to discuss these in tutorial and how they might apply to your work or study environment. For the pros, it's an anytime, anywhere learning environment. You can use teachers or leaders who have expertise in a particular area regardless of where they are in the world. And often there's a wider variety of online resources. Learning online tends to be more convenient and fits in with those of us who are working and studying at the same time. On the con side, programs that seek to change cultural attitudes or change stereotypes might not work as well online and courses that require a physical demonstration of skill or practicum are challenging and sometimes can be replaced virtually but sometimes they can't be replicated as well. Often there's additional cost and the experience of knowledge of the instructors has to be specific to the learning platform that you're using and across the world we do have differential access to technology so there's issues in equity. Here are the synthesis questions for this video. How can technology appeal to different learning styles? And what digital tools would you suggest might work best for each learning style and for your learning style? Share in tutorial this week the ways that you learn best in online situations. And describe what features of an online PD module might be used well in your work environment.